Once you have all of your ingredients, you are gonna get started with activating your yeast by adding your yeast in warm water into a larger bowl. So I'm gonna add my yeast here. Making sure it's all out. Okay. And I want my warm water to be between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's check it. Just about 100. Oh, a little bit more. Even better. Great. We're going to go ahead then, pour that in with the yeast. Okay, and then we are going to stir the yeast in water mixture until the yeast dissolves. has been sitting for about 10 minutes and it's just about ready to go. So rather than just scooping up with this cup, I'm actually going to add flour in here by means of this other scoop or spoon. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when you bake, the science of how much ingredients of each are in a recipe are pretty important. And flour, given its consistency, can pack down pretty easily and we want an exact amount. So by adding in with a scoop, it's making it stay fluffy. But you can see here that I actually have more than one cup. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna fill up each of your cups, however much it is that you need for the recipe, four and a half for this one, and fill it up more than it needs to be. And then you're gonna take, I have here an icing spreader. I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna gently make sure that's all in there and just scrape off the top. And that gives me a nice flat surface showing me that I have one cup of flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my rest. See that it's looking creamy. I'm gonna add all, not all, most of my other ingredients here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and add my sugar. Okay, and my salt. I'm gonna add milk. Egg. and then my flour. I'm gonna gradually add my flour and stir it together as I'm going. And okay, I have my dough here. It's not totally smooth. You can see I had to start using my hand, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and start kneading it on the table and you'll see what um, it means to knead the bread, but before I, or the dough. Before I do that though, I'm gonna sprinkle some flour on my workspace here. And scoop that out. It's very, very sticky. Some other things out of the way. Sprinkle a little bit more flour. and knead my bread. So a lot of people have a lot of different techniques for kneading. Um, as long as you are consistent and knead it until your dough is nice and smooth, it's really okay. Okay, so I like to take mine and fold it over and then take the heels of my hand and push it and then I turn my bread or my dough 
I flip it again, heels in my hand, turn, fold, push, flip. I'm going to keep doing this for about six to eight minutes until it is smooth and not quite as sticky. Okay, I've been kneading my dough for about six or so minutes. You can really see how the consistency of it has changed. It's definitely still sticky, but it's not sticking to my hands the way that it was before. Um, I also meant to say that the recipe called for four and a half cups of flour, but I didn't end up adding all of that. Um, that's why it's important to also add the flour to your dough um, slowly and stir it as you go. That way you can see how your dough is forming. Okay, so this is ready now to rise. So I'm going to take out my bowl that I originally mixed things with. It's still got some dough in there, but that's okay. I'm gonna take some olive oil and put that in there. I'm gonna take my hand and just spread that oil all around. Whoa, sorry, the camera there got a little crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and just plop my dough right down there in the center. I have a cloth here that is damp that I am going to cover my dough with and I'm going to let that sit and rise for about an hour until it has doubled in size. Okay, my bread has been rising underneath this damp cloth for about an hour now, so let's check it out. We hope that the dough has doubled in size. It has definitely doubled in size, so that's exciting. And we are now going to knead in the garlic. The garlic is optional, so if you don't like garlic, you don't have to add it. My family, on the other hand, loves garlic, and so although the recipe called for two tablespoons, um, this is definitely more than two tablespoons, but you can add or not add based on your preference. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take out the dough. I have a cutting board here that I'm going to use as my surface to knead the dough, um, mostly because I already cleaned my table and I don't want it to get messy again. But, okay, here's my dough. Go ahead and take some of my garlic and knead it in the same fashion that I had before, just going to go ahead and dump the rest and make sure I knead it really well so it gets all spread throughout my dough. Okay, I'm going to just do it a couple more times. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this dough back into my bowl because this cutting board is going to become my tray where my naan is going to rest again. So I'm going to pull off pieces of this dough and I'm going to roll it and I want it to be about the size of a golf ball and I'm just going to start lining up my cutting board here. I'm going to do that until all of my dough is rolled into golf ball sized dough balls <laughs> and then I'm going to cover those again with this damp cloth and I'm going to let that rest for another 30 minutes at which that time it will be time to cook. So while I once I'm finished with this and I cover it to rise some more we want it to double again in size I'm going to go ahead and heat up my grill which is how I'm going to cook this. 
Now, I'm not gonna use an outdoor grill. I'm actually going to use a cast iron skillet that has a grill side on it. So, hopefully that works. All right, I'll see you back here in about a half hour. All right, friends, I have my dough here that's been resting for about a half hour and we are looking to see if it has definitely doubled in size. Look how large these have grown. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is give myself a little bit of a space. I left my rolling pin over here. Now you can see my face. I feel weird that I've been doing this whole video without my face. I'm gonna sprinkle some flour on my workspace here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one. Um, we'll do this one. And I'm going to roll it. Whoops. And I forgot to flour my rolling pin as well. That will keep it from sticking. Okay, now let's keep going. Okay. Um, that looks good. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my grill, you can see the flame under there. It's been on for a while, it's super hot. Um, I'm gonna lightly oil where I'm gonna put it. And we're gonna let it sit there and cook for about two minutes. It's really starting to puff. Let's peek at the underside. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna flip it. So before I flip, I'm gonna butter this uncooked side. I'm gonna flip it. Ooh, look at those delicious grill marks. That looks awesome. I'm gonna butter this side too. All right, I think that our naan is done. So I would just repeat those same steps with all of my other pieces and then enjoy my naan. I'm gonna enjoy mine with some curry. So I hope that you have enjoyed this and I hope that some of you all make your own naan. All right, enjoy.